The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off on Jobs Friday. 199,000 jobs added. The unemployment rate, how about 3.7%? Coming at you, man. A very strong economy. Yields pushing up a bit. Seems like we might not get all the cuts you were just thinking about that we would get just about an hour ago. We'll break in some of the action, but where's the markets? We're right back to where we were prior to that number, which is remarkable. You come into the number at 830 at 4580. You jump around. We dive down lower to 4562. We get back up to almost 4590. And just like that, we're basically unchanged in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're a little bit lower. We got a little bit higher yield, but basically a recoil action. We'll see if the action carries through on the open nasdaq 100 off by 78 points that's about half a percent right now in the red you jump over to the dow off by 56 points right now Thirty-six thousand one eleven. that's only about two tenths percent you see the dive lower to almost thirty-six thousand, and you got the russell in positive territory at 1873 crude we got a 68 handle yesterday. We're higher off that price point, still sitting at a relatively reasonable $70.84 in the price of crude. Gold with some action in yields, some action in currencies, some action in gold this morning. Been quite a week for gold. You spiked 21.52 on the future Sunday night. You hit a low of 2027 on Tuesday, and we're approaching that low yet again in gold at 2030. You see the drop off there. That'll make a little bit more sense when you jump over to yields. Now, it's interesting, right? The market unchanged. Meanwhile, you just had the 10-year yield go from almost 4.15 to 4.25. We'll pull it up in a moment. But we got lower price, higher yield coming at you. That's part of the reason why you have the NASDAQ 100 leading the way to negative prices off about a half a percent. You jump over to the dollar index this morning. What are we going to have, right? We're going to have higher yield. We're going to have dollar strength. The dollar back above 104 to 104.87. So you got dollar strength. That's putting some weakness into gold. You have higher yields. You have a market that is actually above where it was at, though, when you came into that number, okay? So could you have higher yields than the market is maybe anticipating, but the market not paying the penalty for that, right? Just pointing to the fact that maybe the Fed is not going to cut as quickly as the market just continues moving forward at a very strong pace. Um. Yeah, we will see. Nonetheless, interesting action. We spike lower. We get it back. We're actually above where you came in at 830. Now, if you said that yields were going to spike higher, would you have the S&P also higher? Right? Interesting action. Sometimes you, you could even know the news and you might struggle to predict the market action because of the volatility. Um, you could have imagined if we saw those yields spiking higher that maybe the market would react poorly. And you have seen that slightly in the NASDAQ 100, but you're only talking about negative by maybe 10 points where you came into that number and not even, basically flat where you came into that number. s and is off by six. Uh, and nonetheless, let's get into the numbers. So the economy adds 199,000 jobs in November. That's the front page of wallstreetjournal.com, wsj.com. And yeah, I mean, the trend is lower, right? You can't deny it. It's a strong number. This is going all the way back from 2021. 2022, what? We were pushing. Remember remember July of 2022, that number that came in at 568? And everyone's like, uh-oh, Fed's got some work to do. Uh, since then, we got lower lows and lower highs. You hit a spike in January of this year at 472, a little bit of an anomaly. You hit a spike of 281 in May. You dropped down to a, a level of 105 in June. And yeah, what, the last six months now you're talking about 105 236 165 262 150 and now 199 today the most interesting part about it may be the unemployment rate at 3.7 percent and you're talking about labor force participation a huge part of that unemployment rate you're now at 62.8 percent 
That's matching a post-pandemic high. And if you're talking about pre-COVID levels of 63.3, pretty remarkable. We're almost back to that level when you think about the amount of people that came out of the workforce, right? That was the whole rhetoric. Now, let me make sure I get this headline right. Got a few headlines jumping around. Yeah, I think this is the one I wanted. Yeah, that's the chart we were just talking about. There's your unemployment rate, unexpectedly going back down to 3.7%. On the wages front, pay increases have become smaller in recent months compared with earlier in the year. Earlier in the year, you're rising 4.7%, wages and prices. So you get the hourly, let's zoom in on this and blow it up a little bit. There we go. Hourly earnings at 4%. Weekly at 3.7, and uh, we're going to get CPI next week. Yeah, so healthcare was a big one, man. Added almost 60,000 jobs this month. They're on 60,000 if you average it out. And jumping back to some of what. Yeah, a small net revision down 35,000 for the previous two months. The unemployment rate at 3.7, you're going to hear that 3.7 number a lot, man. You did see a little bit of a hot number in average hourly earnings. I mean, you got full employment, man. Okay. Hourly earnings going up 0.4% right now. That's a hot number. We got the unemployment rate at 3.7% right now. Taking out some of the other numbers. Yeah, healthcare was 77,000. It's a 60,000 average over the last six months. Government, pretty much all local and state. And they're talking about it in the den. Uh, interesting part of that, not the federal government. Local and state, 49,000 in the month is government, what you're talking about there. Healthcare, 77,000. Manufacturing, stuck in the mud, 28,000 in November. Yeah, now that's going to be a big part of the auto workers there. Bloomberg does a great job doing the live feed. I was watching this right up till the program. Uh, even if you're not watching their program, you know, just in terms of a live feed, breaking down these numbers, because it is interesting on a day like today. Boy, there's so many numbers that comes out in this. Yeah, how about the household survey? 747,000 is what it sur surged by after it declined 348,000 in October. Talk about variance, man. Yeah, so yields jump a bit. They've held on to that a bit. This one's interesting. We talked about the employment. Okay, people coming back to the workforce. Employment population ratio, how tight the jobs market is. You're talking about 60.5%, just below the 60.8 average for 2019 prior to the pandemic. Everything is related to like prior to pandemic, post pandemic. We got the market holding steady, down about 10 points right now. Yeah, the $747,000 per thousand person in the household employment after the decline, even they say in here, variance, right? There's a lot of variance in some of these numbers. Uh, the FOMC might not find that development either credible or durable. Right? Variants, basically. We'll talk about some more of it. We got a lot to talk about. We got 15 minutes till the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by about 11 points right now. We get back to some of the discussion, talking about the numbers. Unemployment rate, 3.7%. That is highly related, of course, to the participation rate at 62.8%, right? Wage growth numbers, 0.4% on a month-over-month -month basis. I'm giving you kind of the biggest numbers out there. The 747,000 in the household employment that drove that, a little bit suspect in the way that variance, right? It's either cre not credible or possibly not durable, possibly on both sides of that, but something to consider nonetheless. All right, we scroll up here talking about different takes on this payroll gains broader than october is one take on there see how we make it through this holiday season when you talk about consumer spending right bonds did flatten a bit after that first spike now what's great is you know this is the breakdown as you come into about 853 that's pretty much where i kicked off this thing and started taking off getting ready for the program higher than expected hourly earnings that's going to be one the fed talks about man so check this one right, right? Yeah, this is the decline in the unemployment rate was led by teenagers in the month. Teenagers, yeah. And the unemployment rate for women over 20, Hispanic Americans and white Americans also fell. So that was who was coming back in the workforce. <clears throat> yeah, the Fed's, in, <clears throat> the Fed's in no rush. And they're still looking for over a full percentage point of easing by the end of 2024, somewhere between four and five cuts, right? If you're doing quarter point cuts, they're looking for between four and five cuts by the end of 2024. Now, remember, the Fed meets about every six weeks. They don't meet every month. So if you got to get four to five cuts in, that's a lot of cuts, to put it lightly. And that household survey is going to get a lot of attention next week, man. And as they're saying, it's basically a catch-up for the variance we've seen in prior months. Variance is, variance, variance is one of the most amazing things out there, folks, if you deal with statistics, probabilities. All right? Some of you know I played a lot of online poker in my days. And boy, one of the things that really applies so much is different games have different levels of variance, which lead to 
larger swings in the short term, even though if you run the sample size long enough, right, everything should navigate back to the mean. But boy, variance can be a tough one sometimes. Uh, I mean, a great example, right? The biggest variance you can have, imagine, is, well, this isn't the biggest variance you can have. I can think of it. One of the largest variance probability plays. You want to play like Mega Millions or Powerball or something like that, right? What are the odds to win? Something like one out of 225 million, something like that, okay? <clears throat> now, you have to consider when you're playing the lottery, we're digressing here, um, but variance, okay? Not a lot of people think about variance in the correct way. There's a lot of times you may have so much variance that you can't withstand that variance even when you're making positive expected value bets, wagers, investments, whatever you want to call them, okay? So let's just look at Powerball. First of all, if you, let's say the Powerball jackpot gets to a billion dollars, right? Well, first of all, you have to consider the fact that you might split that jackpot with two people, three people, four people, five people, whatever it may be, okay? But let's just say... You knew you were going to hit that jackpot for a billion dollars, okay? And let's just say you knew you were going to hit it by yourself and the jackpot rules, which is not the case, uh, meant no taxes or anything like that. So basically that billion dollars was going to be yours tax-free. You don't have to share it with anybody and it goes right in your bank account, okay? I tell you, all you got to do is hit the number. You hit the number. You don't have to worry about sharing it. You don't have to worry about paying taxes. You don't have to do anything. You're going to win a billion dollars. And I'd say to you, well, geez, every dollar I put up, I got about a one out of 250 million shot of winning. And you're telling me that when I do win, you're going to pay me four times my odds for a billion dollars, right? Say, right. Say, well, geez, that's, that's, that's easy money in the long term, Right. How much money should you put into that wager? Uh, probably none of it if you want to keep any of that money because there's so much variance in that bet that for you to reach the long-term average mean in terms of for you hitting it one out of every 250 million times, can you imagine the sample size that you would need to show that you're actually hitting the lottery one out of every 252 million times. I wonder what that, I wonder what, we, you know, we could run that. Let's look at that on the statistics. If, any, if anybody has that, if you're out there watching, you want to run this one, right? What's a good sample size that gives you, and this goes back to statistics, man, gets me back to stat 101. What's a good sample size that gets you a decent confidence interval that you'll be somewhere within that range of the, the actual long-term odds of, hitting the lottery. It's got to be a big number. Point being, right, be careful out there because really that's the easiest money you'd ever make, man. You're guaranteed in the long term to make four times on your money, basically three times profit, right? You bet on a probability of one out of 250 million a hitting and every time you hit, you're going to make a billion dollars. But guess what, man? Sometimes it takes a while for those numbers to pan out. So, you know, that household survey, they're talking about they're just catching up. Yeah, I digressed a little bit and went big picture variance. But sometimes there's a lot of variance in a lot of the data that we get in a lot of the probability distributions that you see in things playing out. So be aware of that one. I like variance. And that's the other part. You know, if you expose yourself to variance, though, right, and you do it in a way that you can manage the risks, okay, as in, you know, Powerball hits a billion dollars, man. You go join a pool with all your friends. You spend $20, right? What are you doing? You're managing the risk, okay? You're making a $20 wager. It almost approaches the point of expected value being positive. It's real close because you got to take out the cash value of today, which has diminished greatly because we got a high interest rate now. And then you got to take out the taxes and then you got to think about splitting people. So it's got to get really, really high to actually be a plus EV bet, even with everything else. But you see that even in that issue, you're managing the risk. You're spending 20 bucks, what, a couple times a year when the jackpot gets big. And um, yeah. But what do you do? You open yourself up to variance, and if it smacks you in the face on the good side, um, then yeah, you bank that variance on the good side because you managed your risk. Gets me back into some of those poker days because I used to play. I used to play big online tournaments, folks. That's what I enjoyed most. And there is an extreme amount of variance. All right, we got two minutes to the break. We're coming back. We're going to talk equities on the opening bell. But check this one out. People like poker. All right, if you're in the stock market, uh, you may have played some poker in your day.
you like a little bit of gambling, you like action, as long as you can do it with a positive expected value. That's what I always tell people. People think about gambling and they have a misconception because they associate gambling with games that have an automatic negative expected value. You go play blackjack, this is interesting in light of, we have craps coming to the Hard Rock in Tampa pretty soon. I think it's here like in the next few days, if not this month. That's a negative expected game. For every time you walk in, you put $100 on that craps table, I'm telling you, in the long term, you're gonna lose money. Not the case, depending on how you're playing at poker. Not the case, depending on how you're investing or trading in the stock market, okay? But I used to play tournaments. And in tournaments, it's very top heavy. You play a 100 person tournament, right? The winner of that tournament might take home 25% of the prize pool. They pay down 10% of the field. 100 person tournament, they're paying 10 people. 90 people are not getting paid at all. You're supposed to have about 100 buy ins for multi table tournaments, right? That means if you're playing a $200 tournament at your local casino and you want to do that by managing variance, you should have about a $20,000 bankroll because there's so much variance in poker. We'll leave it at that. We're coming back. We're talking equities, folks. We're going to take a look at Lululemon. Tigers. They're trading low. Tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar. Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P negative by, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'll get it out. Negative by five points, but we're climbing higher to 45.85. Uh, yeah, markets catching a little bit of a bid right now. You're talking about the NASDAQ 100. We're approaching 16,000. You're only off by about 60 points. You get the Dow off by 27. The Russell is flat this morning. We jump back to yields. It's got a little bit of a recoil, right? We basically drop about four, excuse me, drop about 14 ticks. We've now risen about six ticks from there. Let's see where our yields actually are on that 10 year. 4.22, we'll call it. We were sitting at maybe 4.15 when we kicked off the session. So a little bit higher yield. You jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index, holding on to those gains. Still above 104. We were as high as 104.26 on the dollar. You check out the gold contract. Gold trading down by about $23 right now. We check in on the dollar yen. A little bit of a recoil from yesterday's action as well. A little bit of volatility on our number at 830, as you see as well, in that dollar yen. Let's jump over to the euro, see how we're doing as well. As these markets fade in a bit, and we're negative by eight right now with the euro trading at 107.47. All right, we talked about Lululemon. So Lulu out with their numbers last night. Disappointing numbers, they're off by 2.2%. That's a $10 drop. Now, this thing, man, you talk about strong, right? Yeah, we're off by, what, $2? This equity just traded up $150 this year. We're approaching all-time highs of four eighty five dollars for Lululemon. But, yeah, they trade a little bit lower. And the headline out there for Lulu, tepid holiday outlook, despite strong start to the holiday shopping season is what they say there. Lulu comes in with earnings per share of two fifty three. dollars Not sure what that is comped against. Revenue just above expectations by... That would be $10 million. Yes, $10 million. You got to do decimal points on billions, man. Everything is in billions these days. The company's reported net income for the three month period $249 million or $1.96 a share. They made $255 a year earlier. Almost right in line, right? Sales up 19% from a year earlier. So it's interesting. The sales go up 19%. I mean, look how much extra money they brought in and they actually make less money than they had costs man I mean, look, you're talking about what 340 million dollars extra they took in on that quarter 340 million extra they made 255 million and 1.86 billion a year earlier they made 249 on 2.2 billion this year sales up 12 percent in north america and 49 percent internationally Holiday guidance is what they're talking about, sending the stock lower, though. Lulu said it expects between 3.14 and 3.17 for the fourth quarter. They couldn't quite get into the 3.18 that the analysts were expecting, so just below that number. Earnings, 45 to 493. Market was looking for a little bit higher as well, 480 to 519 for the full year. About $9.55 billion is what they're going to be taking in. I mean, not bad when you look at some of the lower estimates, and maybe that's just a cherry pick low, 8.11, but the high end was almost $10 billion. Decent numbers, but not transferring to, to the profits, and the expectation is a little bit dicey going forward. Total comp sales up 13%. Marco was looking for 12.4. You got some lofty inflation numbers, man. Nonetheless, they're trading lower this morning on Lulu. Just reading through that. But look at this as it saves itself a bit. Nothing <laughs> like it, man. Look at this. Lulu. Up by 10 bucks on the open to 460. But be careful of that one, man. Be careful. Because, you know, it's all about how much money you can make. And boy, they really crushed it on the revenue side, but they can't bring it down to the bottom line. And then you add that onto the outlook problems. And that could be problematic if they're margins are decreasing right we get the russell train higher by seven points to 1877 let's check out some of these fang stocks amazon shares down a bit off about nine tenths percent you get the nasdaq 100 leading the way down you jump over to the big dog apple apple shares holding up relatively well only down about one tenth percent microsoft down six tenths percent how about the day for google yesterday man you give back some of those gains 
Google off by 1.5% today. There's some volatility for you. Meta shares today off by about four tenths percent. We jump over to NVIDIA shares, positive by half a percent for NVIDIA. AMD, flat after their big day to higher prices yesterday. And yeah, let's talk a little bit of Apple. So Apple, let me jump around here. This one from the journal, and I'm sure there's going to be multiple reports on this as we push forward. But they're aiming to make a quarter of the world's iPhones in India. Yeah, the story out uh, earlier this morning, late last night. Foxconn plans to build more factories and give India a production role once limited mostly to China. Apple's no fool, man. Um, no matter what Xi and Biden talked about, man, things are ratcheting up in the next 10, 20, and 30 years, folks. And time flies, okay? And Apple, man, they're going to get it done like the next couple years. Yeah, I saw it. By 2025, let's get the number. Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, combined with plans for expanded production at an existing Foxconn plant near some city in India. Yeah, they're going to be making 50 to 60 million iPhones in India annually within two to three years. Quite a number, man. And they've chosen India for its site for manufacturing stage for lower-end iPhones to be sold in 2025. The first phase of the Foxconn plant under construction in the southern state of Karnataka is expected to start operating in April, and the plant aims to make 20 million mobile handsets annually, mainly iPhones, within the next two to three years. Yeah, it's a smart move. Uh, it's a long-term play, but I imagine you see that happen a bit. Why not, right? Why not? Things are uh, looking a little dicey with China. All right, this article, and that's interesting. I was reading this this morning, and I was thinking, you know, things are going to change at 8.30, and I'm sure they're going to change a little bit. But we'll talk a little bit about this one when we come back. Double trouble investors fight the Fed on two fronts. Rate expectations have plunged for next year, but further out, they are still high. The yield curve. Interesting to see how that one goes forward, man. But, boy, you talk about implied probability of interest rates above 5% in December of 2024. I mean, look at this, man. October 18th. OK, there was a one out of three chance that rates were going to be above 5 percent in December 2024. That's the market implied probability. October 17th. By November 3rd, that odd was 2 percent. We got a flare up. And today that odds are basically zero that we're anywhere near here. We have cuts coming down the line. And it's just a matter of how many is what the market is saying. We get CPI next week. So we're going to talk about some of that action. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about these numbers. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got the S&Ps up by, excuse me, up, right? Not quite yet. Down by just three points. But boy, we were just almost in the green. That was after that initial spike lower on the jobs number. You got the Russell positive by five. Dow just negative by 12 points right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 negative by 37. Let's check out how some of the banks are doing today. Yeah, you got JP Morgan up by about half a percent. Bank of America shares up by about two tenths percent right now. You jump over to Citi, positive by half a percent. Wells Fargo positive as well. Check out some of the airlines. JetBlue. Yeah, what did they change their forecast yesterday? Something quite the day higher for them yesterday. And if you're looking to catch a fallen knife, man, you got to be careful. Anything I would be touching with this equity, okay? And I just flew JetBlue. Used to love JetBlue for the longest time. A bunch of my friends can't stand JetBlue anecdotally up in Boston right now. One of my friends travels a lot. He's from the Boston area. Just bought a home in the Boca market. So he's traveling down there. He's on the flight saying it's the third flight that's been um, delayed to an extreme amount. That one, they, they had to turn around on the tarmac. Uh, that one did have to do with the passenger, in all fairness. So he said, not JetBlue's problem. It's the third time. This time it had to do with passenger. You know, be careful. If you put money into this thing, just realize that you might be able to wake up some morning and it's at two dollars, one dollars on its way to zero. We just went from twenty one to three. Okay? Just went from twenty one to three. So be careful. But with that said, yeah, we got a little bit of a bid man finally in JetBlue. Five forty nine. We got markets. We're there. We got there. It didn't take long. It's nine forty four in the morning and we are in positive prices as you get the S and P's trading at forty five ninety two as we speak. And what else do we have going on, folks? So we got a bunch of great stuff coming up, man. We have First of all, a Tiger Dollar holiday sale. This sale is only running through next week, folks. Okay, you got one week left. Don't delay. Get some Tiger Dollars. You can get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. Okay, three choices in terms of tier levels. You spend 500, you get 600 Tiger Dollars. You spend 1,000, you get 1,300. That's 300 free Tiger Dollars in your account. You spend 1,500, you get a 40% bonus. 2,100 Tiger Dollars. Uh, 600 additional free Tiger Dollars you can use for any TFN newsletter or service. And we got a couple of great webinars coming up as well. Tim Ward, The Secret Science of Market Tops, How to Identify Market Tops. Thursday, that's six days, folks, December 14th, 4 till 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, you can check that out on the front page of TFNN. And if you're a subscriber to the opening call, you're all set already. If you haven't tried out Basil's Outstanding Newsletter, folks, this program is after my show every day. Okay, the Tiger Technician's Hour. You can check out his daily newsletter, the opening call. Great time to do it over the weekend. Basil usually puts out a video for his subscribers on the weekend on Saturdays. He has updates throughout the week every single day when warranted. Uh, not when warranted, every single day, excuse me. Check out the opening call. He's got a webinar coming up in 12 days. Okay, that's, uh, 
Yeah, Wednesday, the following Wednesday, December 20th, before we really come into Christmas and New Year's week, where things will slow down a bit. Sectors and stocks just coming off major 2023 lows, ready for even more upside action. Check that one out as well. You sign up for the opening call. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee as an opening call subscriber. If you're going to check out either of these webinars, okay, if you're going to check out the Secret Science of Market Tops with our man Tim Ward, if you're going to check out the opening call and Basil's subscriber webinar coming up on December 20th, get your Tiger Dollars first. Lock in the added savings of 20, 30, or 40%. You apply them to the newsletter. And folks, even when you get your Tiger Dollars, right, you sign up for a service like the opening call, you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, okay? You apply those Tiger Dollars to the opening call. For some reason, it's a service you don't think fits you with your trading style. Maybe you just don't have the time. Whatever reason, I'm sure you'll love it, okay? Because Basil does an outstanding job. But we know how, we know how it goes. For whatever reason, you don't want to keep it. You cancel it. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Those Tiger Dollars are put right back into your account, and you can use them for the next thing that you maybe want to try out, whether it's a newsletter um, or you want to check out one of the, one of the many webinars we have coming up. The secret science of market tops. We could be at all-time highs by the time Tim Ward is talking December 14th. We'll see how things go next week. Uh, but, yeah, we're only, what, 200 points away on the S&P? We got a CPI number next week, which is an important one. And we're talking about a recent high of 46.34 in the S&Ps. Pretty interesting of where we base out that 1 to 1 1.618 expansion, right? 46.07, we hit that number on the dot. Looks like we're heading back to that number as the market likes the numbers that we got this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, what else we got pulled up here to talk about? Let's take a look. We talked about Tiger Dollars, of course. Yeah, talking about that same article, back to the journal piece. So this was talking about fighting the feds on two fronts, right? Fighting it either on the short end of implied interest rates, whether it's cuts, okay? Now, what it did talk about in here is that the most extreme investors expect cuts really soon. 14% chance that we're getting a cut in January, folks. You think we're getting a cut in January? That's a hefty percentage. Now, this is prior to this morning's number. That's probably going to ease a bit. Futures in, in October, okay, there was a 40% chance of another hike that week. That's now at 3%. Right now, what they do get into is on the other side of that is the longer term rates. OK, here's where they talk about fighting the Fed part two. There's a big gap between long run Treasury yields and where the Fed thinks interest rates should eventually settle. OK, the strange thing here, as they say, I'm quoting this, isn't that the market thinks rates will be higher than before. It's that the Fed does not. The Fed has kept persistent with that number of 2.5 percent. Right. Its September forecast predicted long run interest rates at 2.5 percent and after inflation or real rate of 0.5 percent. Investors think the real rate in the long run will be close to 2 percent. OK, some of the gap between the Treasury market and the Fed's prediction is accounted for by the extra yield investors demand to compensate for the glut of bonds coming from the government as it borrows to fund the deficit. But the rest is the market saying that the Fed has got it wrong. Where is it going to end up, right? Uh, and ought to raise its long-run rates prediction unless it's going to allow more inflation and raise its 2% target. So what's it going to be? Uh, we will see. And they finish this up. The Fed next week could resolve both of those issues. The most bullish case would be they say rate cuts are possible by the spring of next year. And markets will be paying close attention to any sign that Powell is becoming more dovish. Long run rates will get less airtime. But don't forget that if the Fed is right about that long term interest rate, then the 10 year and 30 year bond yields are far too high. I'm thinking about those scenarios. Right. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're believing the Fed with where the natural rate of the long term interest rate is going to be, where inflation is going to be, where the long term interest rate is going to be, then the market has some work to do. And we get to see if that's going to be the case, right? Markets today, they're doing some work to the upside, man. S&Ps, right back to where we were at about 5.30 a.m. this morning, coming up to an area of possible resistance. That's where we were yesterday afternoon, too, 45.95. We jump around to some of the commodities, crude, 70.74 this morning. We check out that gold contract this morning. Gold down to 2018. We're back to 2025. You jump over to the dollar index, pulling back a bit to 104.03. Folks, don't forget, 
Check out those Tiger Dollars on the front page of TFNN.com. 20, 30, 40% bonus. You want to check out the Gold Report, folks? Great time to do it. My dad's got new issues on Monday that come out. You want to try out Market Insights? You want to try out the opening call? Tim Ward's webinar. My newsletter. Lock in those Tiger Dollars savings. One week only. We'll be back to finish up the show, folks. Stay tuned. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off by just two points right now. We were just in positive territory. We trade just back off where we were. Yeah, keep your eye on that number, right? It's just a natural area of resistance, about 45.95. We touched the area of 46.07, 46, 46.34, the recent highs that we made uh, earlier this year. So keep your eye on this range. We're in a range right now, the next 40, 50 points to the upside. You break hard above that 46.34 area, Seems like all-time highs may be coming at you. Not sure you're going to be able to do that depending on where yields are going. Because you put yields back on a daily. We're right at that 50% line. 
And again, kind of a natural area. That's the area that was support going back to July of this year, going back to August, you get a bounce. Also the area that's resistance from September, also kind of where you rolled over in October, uh, excuse me, in August. So yeah, we're back to what? What is that price point? Just over 111, almost a full point above where we're at right now. A little bit of a pullback, but boy, it's been quite a rally. Uh, and yeah, you could just see some volatility playing out. All right, what else we got? We were talking about re restoration hardware. Yeah, this thing had quite a fall from grace, right? Check out the weekly long term. You make a high of 70.44, you base for a while, you trade lower, and looks like we're probably on our way to test these recent lows of 207. As you got restoration hardware, they missed on their numbers. Cherry picking what they did here. But let's see. Yeah, net revenue is 751 million. They were looking for 757. Home furnishings market still being hurt by a slow real estate environment. That's from CNBC over there. And they narrowed its full year guidance range, narrowing that range. Um, but yeah, shouldn't be surprising, man, when everybody's stuck in their home. Be interesting to see what happens with some of these equities if we do get that pullback in yield over the next year or two. Folks, thanks for starting off your non-farm payrolls Friday with me. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Don't forget about the opening call subscriber webinar. Check it out with those